should we get our first guest out? Yeah. Why don't we? I'm keen as mustard to meet him, and I'm delighted that he's doing the show. It is the new Doctor Who, Mr. Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> Doctor, Doctor, can't you see I'm burning, burning? Oh, Doctor, Doctor, is this love I feel? It's turning eight. Oh. You're going to have to live with that from now on for a while, aren't you? Christopher, lovely to see you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. What a handsome man you are. Thanks very much. Isn't he a good-looking man? Yeah. Because I've seen you in movies and you look a bit weird normally on film sometimes. <laughs> you often do, you look quite angular, but in the flesh, what a handsome and charismatic fella. Thanks very much. That's OK, congratulations. I'll come again. <laughs> I don't like you that much. <laughs> now, I'm, I was so excited when I heard they were bringing back Doctor Who because I have very fond memories of it as a kid. So how did you come to get the part? You, you, I mean, was this something you actively wanted or did they come to you first? It was written by Russell T. Davies, who I did a thing called Second Coming With. Which was brilliant. I hope you saw that. It was essentially you playing the, the saviour returning yeah, to Earth. Yeah. yeah, second incarnation of Christ on this Earth. And uh, he also wrote Queer as Folk, Bob and Rose. Okay. Fantastic writer. And I heard that he was writing it, which I thought was quite strange. For yeah, his an career. unusual choice. Yeah. yeah, but he's a massive fan. He's got a Dalek in his house at home. Right. He's been a fan since he was a little boy in Swansea. Yeah. He used to wander around hoping that the TARDIS had appeared. And he could be the doctor's assistant. He didn't want to be the doctor, he wanted to be the assistant. Why did he want to be the assistant? I don't know. That's a peculiar thing. Peculiar. Didn't want to be the doctor, wanted to be his assistant. You could probably define someone's psychology by working out whether they wanted to be the doctor, doctor or the doctor's or the assistant. assistant. Yeah. I wanted to meet the doctor, but I wanted it to be a lady doctor. Yeah. I was... Who would take me in the TARDIS and teach me things. Yeah. And you know what? I still sometimes <laughs> yeah. hope that might happen. Yeah. Um, so you were attracted by the writing. I mean, you know if he's behind it, it's going to be a quality writing in the past. Yeah, I, I, th yeah. I thought I had a chance. Um, to, because, it, you know, its reputation kind of uh, dipped in the 80s and, I, and um, you know, you get mentions of his, of his love of the series in Queer as Folk and, and, and stuff and it, it, there's a real passion in him for it. He really believes in it as, as, a, as a vehicle for Saturday night television because it is a fantastic idea. Yeah. An alien who can travel backwards and forwards in time, it gives, it gives the thing scale. For instance, episode 8, Rose, played by Billy Piper, gets to meet the father that she never met so we she go goes back and meets her Yeah, father. we have an 80s episode. Mm. Wow, that's pretty... That's and, a great dramatic and idea. And it's frightening. There's some terrifying aliens in it, but it's also really emotional, and it's dealing with loss and things. So without, without getting soapboxy, he, he, there's some powerful stuff in there. Yeah, uh, it's really... I've seen the first episode. I watched it with my children. They loved it. Good. And I was worried about it, because they'd got no knowledge of Doctor Who. I once tried to make them watch an old episode of Doctor Who, and they had no time for it. Mm, which, the doctor? which Doctor? I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been one of the John Pertwee ones. Right. Who was my favourite? Right. OK. Did you have a favourite Doctor? Um, the first one I remember is Patrick Troughton. Wow, that's, that's so going people, way back. Yeah, well, well, for some reason, when people say to me, Doctor Who, I have this black and white image of his face, uh, his fantastic face. But the ones I grew up with were Baker and Pertwee. Yeah, well, but Tom Baker, I think everyone loved Tom Baker, yeah. those who remember him. But jo I liked um, John Pertwee because of his velvet jacket. Yeah, you, you liked that, the, yeah, the whole... he was quite the dandy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a... Yeah. I liked that. Uh, that's why I would have thought when they were looking for a doctor, they might have considered I, yeah. someone who liked clothes, you I, know. I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the acting's probably quite important, but I would have thought the clothes-wearing really would have been above that. It occurred to me that you... You know, you dress like a doctor. I'd have been a much 70s. better doctor yeah. than you. We both agree yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's not too late. <laughs> Get that cockometer on the table. <laughs> it's not a cockometer. <laughs> Who would have been the best doctor? Who would have been the best doctor? Get it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I do my own music and everything. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that would scare the Cybermen, wouldn't it? Yeah, come out with a cock yeah. rule. Yeah. Where, where, where do you... Come on that, do you reckon? <laughs> I come about registered trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Get back here, come on. Yeah. I don't want to drag Doctor Who down into my yeah. mire. There'll yeah. be children watching it. Um, <laughs> can we have a look at a clip? Let's have a look at a clip of the new Doctor Who. This starts Saturday night on BBC One. And as I said, I watch my kids, and uh, the, my little boy's 11, my daughter's 8, and she's quite easily scared by stuff. And she found it scary, but not too scary that she wouldn't want to watch it again. Interesting. So it's kind of perfectly pitched, I think, which is a difficult thing to get right. Yeah, I mean, 
we'll have to see with later episodes because yeah. it gets scary. It gets but scary. That's, that's for parents and children to decide. But he's super confident and just inquisitive yeah. Yeah. and always going forward, always going to... wants yeah. to talk to, wants to engage with the aliens. Yeah, yeah. And I think that takes the fear factor out of it a bit yeah. for kids. If I'm being chased down a corridor and just before I slam a door... I give him a flash and a grin. I think that invites kids into it. Yeah, but That's not invites them in a Michael Jackson kind of no, way. No, absolutely. Although, <laughs> yeah. do you really think you should be showing a strange doctor turns up, he takes a young woman away in a phone box? Into a, into a box, and I yeah. must be, what, 25 years older than her? Although Billy Piper's got a history of that kind of relationship. <laughs> well, you're 900 years older than I do, in, yeah, in yeah, character. Yeah. Let, well, let's not get uh, into this because uh, we have a montage of the series. I've seen the first episode. It's great. It's Saturday night. I urge you to watch it with your kids if you've got them. If not, steal someone else's because you want that reaction. Um, but this is a, a kind of montage which shows some of the other creatures in the later episodes. And it looks like it just gets better and better. Yeah, we do get stronger as we go, I think. Fantastic creatures from the look of them. This is the new Doctor Who. I'm the Doctor, by the way. What's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life. <laughs> That's more like it. Stay in there! They're not dead. It's all right. No heartbeat, no life signs of any kind. They just don't die. Time Lord. What? In his travelling machine. Or with his little human girl from long ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Time travel. <laughs> Excuse me, do you mind not farting while I'm saving the world? This is what I travel for, Rose, to see history happening right in front of us. Who are you? Just a friend. It's back. It's back. That's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, BBC One. Don't miss it. That's fantastic. But interestingly, I mean, often when someone takes on a role like this, which is, it can be a defining role in their career, you think, well, there's a risk you'll be typecast by this. But to an extent, you've been typecast already mm. because you get to... You, we normally see you in gritty dramas, normally northern dramas, and normally you're quite dour, serious, mm. miserable-type mm. people you often play. <laughs> Humourless, cold, grey, <laughs> unpleasant, <laughs> unlikable, unlikable, distrustful, frightening, <laughs> aggressive, unpleasant, big-faced kind of guys, right? Yeah, goggle-eyed kind of loon. Big ears. Yeah. Big, big ears. Big, <laughs> flappy ears. Jeez. Yeah. Anyway, this is, southern, so, uh, this is a southern <laughs> thing, isn't it? But you know what I love about uh, your ears, if you don't mind me saying this, is uh, Christopher has a sense of humour about them, because they're not that big, no. right? But in, the show, but in the new Doctor Who, he makes mention to his ears, of course. Yeah, well, there's the whole thing about um, the Doctor checks out his appearance after each re regeneration, yeah. so... Yeah, they're, they're commented on yeah. in, the, in one of the sequels. Well, in the trailer, you're running towards the camera and they're flapping quite a lot. Hey, yeah. And I thought, man, <laughs> I tell you story, if you had Dumbo's magic feather, you'd be off! <laughs> I was, what, I was, I was doing a, doing a, a television programme once and, and they, I was backlit. And because I was backlit, I, 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 I looked fine, apparently, apart from I had these two huge glowing radars. <laughs> so what we did was I had gaffer to, I had to do a scene, I think it was a love scene, with black gaffer tape behind my ears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Covering them so the light didn't go through them. Yeah. I hope you remember to take it off before you went home. Yeah.